What's going on guys, Billy here, and one of the standout features that makes the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced so special is these three modules that mount onto the top of this drone. It's the camera on the front and these three attachments that separate the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced from like the consumer level Mavic 2 Pro and Mavic 2 Zoom, but these three attachments right here aren't very new. These are the same exact attachments that came shipped with the older Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual and Mavic 2 Enterprise Zoom. Remember, everything about this drone is pretty much the same as those two older drones except for the camera. Now because these modules are the same, I've actually already made videos on these attachments, three separate videos actually one for each of them, but that was a little over two years ago I think and my videos were really not the best back then, so here we are now covering them again. Before we get too far into things here, I do just want to mention one more thing because I know it'll come up down in the comments section below. There is technically a fourth attachment made available for the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, I just don't have it yet. It's the RTK module, it's sold separately for about $700, a little under $700, so it doesn't come included in the box, right? With the spotlight, the speaker, and the light beacon, you get all of that inside of the box when you buy your Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, but the RTK module, again, is sold separately, and it kind of resembles that same module that was included on the top of the Phantom 4 RTK, but it's now just removable, and it's on a smaller airframe. So, if you guys are interested in picking up that RTK module, or if you're interested in picking up the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, feel free to check out Anatom Geo Mobile Solutions. Again, remember, they are the ones that were kind enough to send this drone out for me to make videos for you here on YouTube. So if you are interested in picking up this drone and you need someone that's reliable to buy it from, that's going to offer you a ton of support. Again, feel free to go over to Anatom Geo Mobile Solutions. They're a nationwide dealer of GPS equipment, and they'll definitely take good care of you. So getting into things here, the three attachments that come included in the box when you purchase your Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced are the light beacon, the spotlight, and the speaker. All of them attach onto the top of the drone by two screw mounts and plug into the drone through a micro USB connection. That mounting process is the same across all of the attachments made available for the Enterprise Advanced. So remember, you've got the two screw mount points that lock the attachment onto the airframe so that it doesn't go anywhere while you fly. And then you've also got the micro USB port that transfers power from the battery on the drone to the attachment that you're using. So let's go ahead and add the speaker attachment on here. It's super simple. You just kind of seat it into place. Push down on the DJI logo, spin the screw mounts, and you are now in business. It's locked on there really well. Don't worry, no matter how fast you fly, it's not going to fly off your drone while you're moving around the screws do a good job at holding it in place. Uh, and the good thing is that it is hot swappable. So if you need to make the switch from one attachment to another, you of course wanna land the drone, but it's as simple as just taking it off by the screws, going ahead and adding on your second attachment here, pushing down on the DJI logo, spinning the screws, and you're good to go. The DJI Pilot is going, the DJI Pilot app is going to react in real time, make the switch and give you the controls that you need for which attachment is mounted onto the drone at that time. Now, a lot of people will ask me, hey, if I add on any of these attachments, is it going to decrease my flight time? Is it going to decrease my top speed? And like the answer is technically yes, right? You're changing the shape of the drone, you're adding on weight, you're making it less aerodynamic, as aerodynamic as a quadcopter could be, but you're changing the overall shape and you're adding weight. So yes, you are going to see a decrease in flight time and a decrease in your top speed, but it's so negligible that it's not even worth talking about. And DJI doesn't mention it in any of their marketing material or any of like the specs for this drone. So it decreases the flight time, it decreases the top speed, yes, but again, it's so negligible negligible that it's really not even worth talking about. So yeah, now let's get into each of these attachments individually and go over how they work. So the first attachment that I want to cover here is the light beacon, which truth be told, doesn't offer all that much versatility. All you can do is turn it on and off. It's bright and it can be seen from over three miles away though, so it's the perfect companion for flying at nighttime to maintain line of sight. Here's my gripe though about the light beacon, is that the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced airframe already has an auxiliary LED built into the bottom that can be used to see the drone from over three miles away when you're flying in the low light scenarios. Now, the main use case of this auxiliary LED, auxiliary auxiliary LED is to be used when the drone is landing in low light scenarios so it can throw light onto the ground and it can come to a nice slow landing if the area is dark that's great but it has a dual purpose of also being spotted while flying around so if you wanted to use these bottom auxiliary LEDs instead of the light beacon you could then free up that attachment spot for something that might be a little bit more useful to your scenario your use case whether it's the spotlight or the speaker I will say though one thing about the beacon attachment is that it helps fill in the gaps so to speak because imagine if you're flying this drone at nighttime, you're flying it away from you, all is great because you can see those bottom auxiliary LEDs. The drone is pitched away from you. So again, the bottom of it, the bottom plate is facing towards where you're flying from. But if you go and you turn that drone and even fly sideways or
or back towards you, then you lose complete visibility of the bottom plate of the drone. So therefore, when the drone is faced in the opposite direction, you can see the beacon up on top, thus giving you full visual line of sight. All right, so the light beacon attachment is probably the least impressive, the least versatile, and in my opinion, the least useful attachment made available for the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. Don't get me wrong, I understand why DJI made this. I understand why it exists. It's a great idea to mount onto the drone, to be able to use it when flying at nighttime to maintain visual line of sight so you can quickly see where your drone is in the air. But if that was your goal, why not go and buy some cheap LEDs, be able to mount it wherever you want onto the drone, and then free up that front attachment spot for something that's a little bit more functional, like say the spotlight here, which is the next attachment that I want to cover. And I've got to say that this thing is incredibly bright, especially for its size and the fact that it mounts onto a Mavic. To give you a base level understanding of its functionality, within the DJI Pilot app, you've got the ability to flip the spotlight on and off, as well as change the brightness from 1% all the way up to 100%, which let me tell you is crazy bright at nighttime. Now, of course, the use case for the spotlight attachment is to be able to see better in low light scenarios or in pitch black scenarios. So whether you're taking photographs, whether you're taking video, whether you're just analyzing something through the live feed coming back to the smart controller from your camera, or if you've got somebody on the ground that you're gonna fly the drone out for, and provide light for them. For example, a jet ski started floating away that was docked and they had to go out on the, the canoe to go and get it and they didn't have any light. So I flew the Enterprise Advanced out there with a spotlight to give them light. That's a story for another video, but regardless, no matter what you've got to do in pitch black scenarios, this thing throws out plenty of light. So to give you a few examples, here's the drone sitting about 75 feet away from this home. At full brightness, the entire facade is completely lit up. And even though most people probably aren't buying this drone for this specific use case, this would make one hell of a portable work light. Now getting into a more real world scenario, tilting the camera down towards the ground as we fly about 100 feet off of the ground offers enough light to clearly see what's going on on the ground. So if you're using this in a search and rescue operation, you can actually make use of the visual camera, whereas you typically only be relying on the thermal sensor. This could be helpful for further identifying a person or subject that you're looking for in greater detail. One more example that I wanted to share here is a mock roof inspection with the light tilted down as far as it can go. Using the thermal camera is definitely the way to go when trying to find underlying moisture, but to get an actual look at the roof, the spotlight floods the area with light so that you can make use of the visual camera. Zooming in even helps get a closer look directly where the spotlight is pointing. Now, I quickly want to offer a pro tip out there for anybody that owns this drone or plans on owning it when you use the spotlight attachment you do not and I repeat do not need to always have it blasting at a full 100% First of all, it does get hot. I haven't had any overheating issues, but it does get hot to the touch, so be wary of that. It does have some ventilation out the back, but again, it does get hot. That's the first thing, but the real reason I'm bringing this up is because you've got to balance the power of the light with the exposure of the camera to get an evenly and well-exposed image as best as you can with a harsh light like this. So if you're familiar with like higher level photography or higher level video, we'll go with photo for this example. Of course, when you're using a flash, you want to try Try and balance the flash and the exposure of the camera. And when you're using the spotlight, it's no different. So if you're trying to say scan a wall at nighttime, you're, you're conducting a thermal inspection, but you also want to try and get some visual photographs and video as well. You don't want the beam from the spotlight to be shining as bright as it possibly can on a reflective wall, because then it's going to totally kill the shadows. Those shadows are going to be pitch black and you can't bring them back. So just play around with the exposure of the camera, which is usually set to auto and then play around with the brightness of the spotlight in order to get a nice even exposure. I hope that I explained that well and you are going to learn with time when using it, but just know that blasting that light at a full 100% really isn't always the go-to and best option every single time. I also just wanna throw in one more gripe here as we kind of wrap up our talk on the spotlight. This is the same attachment that was made available for the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual and the Zoom. So this is like two years old and it's still manually adjustable. I mean, think about how much more powerful this light would be if while you're flying around, you could automatically adjust the tilt of this using like a scroll wheel on the back of the remote. It would be so much more usable and so much better. But if you want to adjust the tilt on the light, you've got to land it and do it yourself. So that's just something I want to throw out there. And I hope that on a next generation version, we can get some sort of motor 
on these attachments to adjust them on the fly. Now getting on to our third and final attachment, the speaker, which is by far my favorite of the group just because of how different it is. Not to mention, it also provides a lot of great benefits too. It's funny, as an aerial photographer, I thought a great use case for a drone mounted speaker would be to yell at people to move out of the way of the photograph I wanted to take, let's say in front of a lighthouse. But on a more serious note, having a speaker on top of this drone brings about so many possibilities, so many great use cases for a lot of different people in a lot of different fields. I wrote down a couple over here. I mean, this is probably my favorite lifeguards relaying information to swimmers. How often are you standing there in the water and you've got the lifeguard blowing the whistle at you, making hand signals? If they could just fly a drone out there and tell you what's up, it would be great, right? Uh, also, of course, you've got law enforcement personnel that are maybe potentially trying to communicate with a suspect, communicate with somebody in, you know, some sort of hostage situation or whatever, you know, the drone might intimidate them, but still, we'll say that, right? They can communicate with somebody that's a suspect and they don't want to get close to. Uh, you've got first responders being able to communicate with people that are evacuating an area, giving them instructions. Um, you've also got the ability to, uh, you know, communicate with somebody that you find during a search and rescue mission. I mean, imagine how many times does a drone spot an individual that's lost, say, in the woods, and it's just kind of sitting there and you can see the drone and you wonder if that they can see you if you're that person, and being able to communicate with them and say, hey, we see you help is on the way is going to put peace of mind in their mind. So again, the speaker attachment by far my favorite because it offers so many great benefits. Now, along with offering all of these benefits, the speaker is definitely the most feature rich as well. It's not like the light beacon or the spotlight where you can just turn it on and off or adjust the brightness, but instead from that microphone icon displayed in the top left portion of the screen, you can quickly change the output volume from the speaker. You can directly speak into the remote on the fly. So whatever you speak is then transmitted to the drone and it emits from the speaker, or you can select from some local audio clips saved to the drone to play from the speaker. To add audio clips to your device, you'll tap on the three dots in the top right corner and select the attachment tab towards the bottom of the list. Along with being able to change the volume of the speaker, you can also add audio by recording it right onto your remote using the built-in microphones and then saving it, or you can upload audio files from an external device plugged into the back of the smart controller. Think about it, whatever you might be using the speaker attachment for, you can preload audio clips onto your device that were say pre-recorded beforehand in a nice quiet environment from maybe a higher quality audio capture device like a USB microphone that are then saved onto your device and played with the click of a button. So I brought up the example of like a lifeguard, for example, right? Sometimes beaches are windy. Sometimes beaches have a lot of people. There's a lot of commotion, a lot of noise. So rather than recording it there on site, you could just tap on the screen and say, get it, get out of the water, um, move in closer, right? There's all of these different possibilities and the speaker attachment is pretty great. But how does it sound? Look, the audio quality is not the best, but it gets the job done. I think that you are probably more concerned about the level of the audio and how loud it is. So let's test out the loudness of the speaker from multiple distances away. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a test of the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced Speaker Attachment. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a test of the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a test of the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced Speaker Attachment. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a test of the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced Speaker Attachment. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a test of the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced Speaker Attachment. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a test of the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced Speaker Attachment. Now, DJI's spec sheet says that the speaker attachment emits a sound of 100 decibels in terms of loudness at four feet away. Now, chances are you're not going to be blasting the speaker in somebody's face from four feet away. But luckily, when you guys listen to those test clips, you can clearly hear what's coming from the speaker from 75 to 100 feet away, which is great. So the speaker attachment is definitely my favorite. It's the most versatile. It's the coolest, the most interesting. But I think that out of all of these attachments available for this drone, this one is going to save the most lives when it comes to, you know, using this drone for search and rescue. So that's pretty much it. I'm definitely going to cover the RTK module in the future, but as of right now, these are the three modules, the three attachments that come included with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. So if you guys enjoyed, feel free to go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button down below. Feel free to check out AnatomG Mobile Solutions to pick up your Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced if you're interested in this drone. And as always, I'll talk to you later.
Peace.